on. I think Barman might jump on yet. Um, but we can go ahead and get started here. Um, it's So it's Monday, November 8th of 2021. This is the Stoughton Plan Commission. And we do have a quorum. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from October 11th. I would entertain that motion. Move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. Next item is the council representative report. Anything to report out? All the person uh, out. Just uh, at the October 12th council meeting, ordinance 20 of 2021 and ordinance 21 of 2021 were both approved and at the October 26th council meeting, R159 of 2021 was approved. All right, thank you. And then we have a staff report. Um, typical um, kind of status of current development that you've seen. Um, I think if you've been on the east side of town, you'll actually see quite a bit of activity. The Weeble, Weeble World facility is really coming out of the ground nicely, um, making pretty good progress on the Dane County precinct. The sidewalk along Veterans Road uh, abutting the precinct uh, was fit in there nicely. So at least uh, we now have a continuous run heading south from there as well. So just wanted to highlight that Pizza Hut at their new location, I believe, has recently shifted to open at the new facility and close their the previous facility. We understand that there that may actually be on the market now already. <clears throat> All right. Any questions about the reports? Hearing none, item number five is a request from Luke Campion for a conditional use mm -hmm. permit approval for an indoor commercial entertainment use uh, restaurant at 177. West Main Street. We do have a need for public hearing. Rodney, it says you're sharing your screen, but I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Uh, were you just seeing the notice before? Yeah. No, I think I can see it. And is there something you want to cover before we go into the public hearing? Uh, Luke is actually here, able to answer questions and participate as well, but uh, it's a facility that's being converted into a restaurant location. Um, it will go through the, the building permit process, but right now it would be a conversion of an existing building to facilitate this pizza and Italian um, restaurant operation that he submitted his application for. All right, and I didn't see anyone signed up to speak at the public hearing, did you? We did not. All right, well, just for formality, I'll close the regular meeting and reopen for the public hearing. Is there anyone out there that would like to speak? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing, reopen. Yeah, does the applicant have anything he'd like to add? I just gave a very cursory overview of a project that seems kind of exciting for, for him. <clears throat> I think you're muted. Luke. Hi, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you all the persons. Thank you, Rodney, uh, for the opportunity. I represent Lucas Pizza. My name is Lucas Campion and it's been a dream of mine to own a small family run pizzeria and we're going after the opportunity. So uh, we appreciate the chance and look forward to working with you guys. Excellent. Congratulations. And uh, we'll see if we have any questions as we go through this process. So the need for the conditional use is because the building has never been used or is because of a time lapse or? Yeah, the, this type of use is conditional in the district. Um, and it has been a restaurant within the last 12 months. So it would have to go through the process that we're 
or following right now. All right. And does anybody have any initial questions or comments about uh, the issuance of a conditional use for this establishment? All right, I'm hearing none. Did anyone wish to um, entertain a motion? I will move to approve. All right, and the approval will go to the council. Is there a second? I will second. No, Pete, take your pick. All right, I think I heard uh, Alder Majewski. And uh, any questions or comments? So I imagine, go ahead. I have one question is, will there only be whole slide or a whole pies or will there be slices available? It's we're looking at doing whole pies initially and basically being open in the evening. Um, we are looking maybe into doing slices. Depending on how things are going as well as what kind of activity there could be downtown and how um and how it may work out down there as far as doing slices but right now um we're looking at opening up in the winter it could be something more seasonal for us i suppose <laughs> but uh it's it could be a possibility in the future and, and uh i i so it's it's only takeout right Takeout and delivery only, yes. Okay. And you think parking wise, I'm guessing you're you're thinking that it will be sufficient if you're open initially evening since there seems to be kind of less traffic going on downtown, it seems like on that block at least to from what I've noticed, but you've you've taken that into consideration. I mean, with the municipal lot in the back and the street parking on, I believe, all four corners right there, uh, I believe there'd be plenty of parking. Okay, cool. I look forward to it. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? And I guess the only thing I would say is, are you, working with staff on on the building are you doing any exterior work signage um, or anything like that that we need to be aware of yes uh depending on how tonight's meeting went there will be a uh an awning we're going to take down the on the existing awning and put up a new one with our logo on the awning and uh that will be that's we're working on that right now for the uh, we're not going to do anything with the facade right away just because of the weather um, comes come spring. We may we may be at least doing some paint, but I think the the weather's kind of uh, pushing us back a little bit on that, but the awning will be replaced. Um, and you can be expecting that paperwork within the next week or so. Right. Yeah, I would just suggest you run that through Michael before you actually contract out because you're in the overlay district. Yes. So that, yep. so we just want to make sure you're aware um, so you don't get too deep into it. And I wouldn't anticipate any problems. We just need to make sure that it's within the <laughs> guidelines. Yes, I, I reviewed the guidelines and I think we'll we'll be in uh, we'll be underneath them. All right. Anybody else have anything? All right. Uh, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. So that would go to the city council. It would be two weeks from tomorrow. Right. And th thanks for being here, Luke. Oh, you betcha. Thanks, Tim. But Thanks to care. other people. And is that all you need from me right now? Yep. For tonight, yep. Thank you very much. You guys have a good night. Thank you. All right. Okay, item number six is a request by Jessica Vaughn, JSD Professional Services, 
for approval of a plan development, general development plan at 2525 Jackson Street. Anything we, before we go into the public hearing, uh, Director Shield? I'll just give you a brief uh, introduction. Uh, this particular item you've seen in concept level discussions at the previous plan commission meetings, they've submitted this request. It's ultimately changing um, the general development plan to allow for multifamily <laughs> on this site. Uh, the proposal is for 88 units in one building. We'll go through the, the exemptions that would be requested as part of this GDP zoning request after, after the public hearing, or if there's questions during the public hearing, we can certainly go through those as well. But the primary change is from a commercial site to a multifamily site. And I think you'll find that's very consistent with the concept plan that was submitted previously for the commission's discussion. All right, any questions before we go into the public hearing? Hearing none, we'll close the regular meeting, reopen the public hearing. I didn't see anyone signed up, but is there anyone that wishes to speak? Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing, reopen for our regular business. Is there anything that developers would like to add? Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, Connor Kearney here with with Ford Development, and uh, thank you, Mayor Swadley. Um, Rodney, I, I can do just a brief overview and turn it over to you to kind of walk through things if that works. Sounds great. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, Jess Vaughn did have a conflict this evening with another meeting, so um, I, I, but we'll be able to cover everything here today, and I'll should be able to sufficiently answer any questions that do arise, but. Um, as I as stated, Connor Kearney with Forward Development Group, and first off, we'd like to thank the council for their review and evaluation of our application. Um, as Rodney stated, this is a general development plan for proposed multifamily development within Kettle Park West. Um, and as the group is aware, this portion of KPW was originally planned for commercial de uh, development and was marketed towards retail tenants since the beginning of Kettle Park West, um, specifically junior box retail. So meaning medium-sized commercial tenants. And as the retail environment changed dramatically over the course of the last few years, you know, really with an emphasis on e-commerce and an overall reduction in desired gross leasable space from those junior box tenants, you know, we, we've chosen to pivot with the market as well. So in response, that is the application before you this evening. Um, and we're in pursuit of that multifamily development here to support market demand and offer an alternate housing option for future residents of Kettle Park West. <laughs> Additionally, the residential phase of Kettle Park West, which current um, phase one is, is under construction right now, but it does not include this type of, this multifamily development, mm -hmm. this type of housing. <laughs> and we feel it offers a logical transition into those traditional single family homes in the residential phase uh, in an effort to retain residents within the city of Stoughton and Kettle Park West. So. We appreciate your consideration and uh, I'll be available here this evening to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Connor. Are there any questions from uh, commissioners at this point? Certainly, I, aside from questions, I think it would be who of us to go through the, the exemptions or um, considerations for the different items um, and they're contained in the resolution that I'll now share. Um, so it's in the packet, but the, the resolution that's being considered by the Planning Commission tonight uh, can be amended, um, but I think it's noteworthy to really go over the specific deviations, if you will, that are being requested. Now remember, this is in comparison to an MR24 district, and MR24 is our multifamily, our high density multifamily residential district. So when we talk about comparisons or the um, exceptions that are being requested, it's in relationship to that MR24 standard. Um, the first one that would be necessary under this proposal would be allowing um, 88 units in one building. Uh, the MR24 code has uh, a maximum of 12 units per building. Um, the second one is a slight increase in the density to 28.3 dwelling units per acre, as opposed to the 24, which is allowed on MR24. Uh, along with the density considerations, the minimum lot area required for MR24 is 1,800 square feet per dwelling unit. Um, they're requesting that to be 1,535 square feet per dwelling unit. 
The setback that they're seeking is a 20 foot setback as opposed to a 50 foot. We'll once again also look at the site plan, but I just wanted to go through these first. Um, and then the, the last one that would be necessary would be the, the maximum height. The building is proposed to be 50 feet, 40 foot would be the general standard of the MR24. Um, so recognizing those are the, the exemptions or special considerations that are desired here. Um, I think you've all seen in your packet um, and I, I don't wanna scroll too fast. So I'm trying to do this slowly so you can see the pictures as well. The elevations that were included in the GDP document are on, on the screen now. You can see the four-story building, multiple um, uh, articulation within the building that's envisioned here. I, I think these are samples. I don't know if they're completely identified. It says building materials are yet to be solidified, but talks about the use of stone and, and some other material types. <clears throat> the other thing I was going to try to highlight was the actual site plan. And again, I apologize for having this on a screen that I have to manipulate in front of you. Um, you'll remember to the east of this site is the multi-tenant retail um, or, or commercial building that's under construction right now. <coughs> and the easternmost tenant in this building is the Melio's sub and, and then the other tenants. So you'll see that there's actually proposed to be a driveway access off of Jackson Street that would facilitate access to the east side of the multifamily unit as well as parking along that side. Uh, but then the primary access for residents using the facility is a secondary connection to Jackson Street that would lead to underground parking as outlined, as well as surface parking. Um, you'll recognize this site does contain the wetland area that is in, being preserved. Uh, they have the building setback line and the wetland buffer line shown on here. Uh, there's a grading limit of 30 feet off the wetland. You'll see that they're proposing to have a trail system that would tie into their network or their sidewalk to at least take it to the eastern, uh, east to west across the site. And I think it, it eventually tie into a trail system that would go around the basin in the future. Um, Connor, did I miss anything? I'm sure I did. I, obviously it's a, it's a complete application. I wasn't trying to miss anything, but both for commissioners and for you, Connor, if there's other things people would like to discuss, um, certainly can do so. I, I think that was a great overview. Um, happy to answer any questions, but that, that captures it from a site standpoint. And just to clarify, um, you were correct, and those aren't actual architectural um, renderings or elevations for this product, but rather just applicable precedent images that we thought would be fitting for the final product. So at, at, at a staff level, um, we've put together the draft resolution I'm going to highlight one thing that I think we need to come to resolution on, not resolution as part of the resolution, but something, that, a condition that we need to talk through. Um, this increases the density into this area by 88 units. As it would currently stand, if we didn't have any condition for um, something different, we would get fees in lieu of land dedication for this parkland. Um, I think it's probably appropriate, and I think there might be uh, combined interest by the applicant to um, work together to try to secure additional parkland in the, if you will, in the fourth phase of the Kettle Park West area. You'll recall the city did acquire four acres that expanded the, the original park dedication to offset uh, previous residential components of the Kettle Park West development. We think that it would behoove us to include in this resolution the desire to do something similar in, in some type of form of an agreement. Um, I'm going to pull up on the screen um, some potential language that I'd, I'd look to have the commissioners consider. You'll see on the bottom of uh, the screen right now, it says the developer has paid, one of the conditions is suggested to be developers paid to the city all park improvement fees and applicable parkland or impact fees. Um, you know, having looked at that more closely, I think there's some alternative language that I think would be appropriate. Um, and it has, it, I think you can see it now, but I'll read it. Um, in place of that condition, I'm suggesting this. Uh, prior to issuance of a building permit to construct buildings for this location, a written agreement shall be in place with the city that outlines the requirements for parkland dedication 
and associated park improvement fees. <clears throat> it is anticipated the city will require parkland to be dedicated in a location acceptable for the number of units proposed. I, again, th that agreement might come to some um, different number. Maybe it's not the complete acreage, maybe it's a combination of park fees, um, but solidifying where that might happen. It gives us a few months to continue to work through the, the SIP process and work to have an agreement ultimately that would be approved by the city council and the developer to, to work through that parkland dedication requirement. Now, again, that, that's a staff recommendation and consultation with a recreation director. Mayor Swadley is aware of uh, that thought as well. Um, so I, I, I'd introduce it to commissioners, not as something that um, we're just thinking of now, but we wanna solidify it a little more strongly than we had in the original draft as, as proposed. Um, Alder person Caravallo, do you have any comments on that? You're the chair of Park and Rec. Uh, I do, and I'm glad that you brought this up, Rodney. Um, I, I agree with the wording there. I would actually like to see uh, if we could potentially expand the dedicated piece of parkland that is uh it's not on jackson it's on what is it on oak opening is that the kind of north south street um if we could expand that kind of like reserved or preserved piece of of parkland uh with the amount of acreage from this dedication i think that would be a a good way to go all right all the person my ask you do you have any thoughts on the language uh, not for language, but I do have a comment. Uh, so please go ahead. What, what happens, you know, um, if let's say the economy goes south and they decide not to continue on with uh, phasing things out? Um, is there a timeline? Is there a, a drop dead date here that we can that that, that is involved in with this? As it's written in my mind, it's written to say that we wouldn't be able to issue a building permit for them to start construction on this multifamily unit until an agreement to the city's satisfaction had been secured, both in location, quantity, and, and, and fee structure, if there's a combination thereof. So um, that's the time limit, I think, is trying to acquire what we, we as a city think would be appropriate. And, and balance that with you know the expansion interest that, that Phil has mentioned and others think is probably likely a good place to do so. Okay. And would that come through here or council or both? Well, ultimately the ultimately the agreement would be a, a council action level item. Um, I don't know what committee. Uh, it might be a finance committee and council. I, I just haven't worked through the committee process, but ultimately the council would have to approve it. All right. Any follow-ups, uh, Alder Maskey? No, thank you for the answer. All right. Uh, all the person Schumacher, did you have any thoughts on this one? Um, I, I just have a, a little bit of concern with, with throwing that density in there and, and whether we're going to have, uh, if that's going to have any impact on either fire coverage, police coverage, um, that, that sort of thing. Um, with with that little bit extra density that's expected in that in that plot. Uh, obviously, I can't speak to for police fire and EMS. Uh, obviously, anytime there's residential units that are added, uh, there's a potential for additional services. There's no question. Um, it, I, I just can't speak on behalf of them with with an informed answer to that. Yeah, and that's um, in, in coordination with uh, if uh, 51 West also starts adding multis in there. Um, it just seems like that's going to add, uh, I mean, an even further burden on that end of town. Yeah, I think to your point, it's kind of a double edged sword, you know, as far as the way the funding works. You know, it's it's a chicken and the egg, and the unfortunate reality is the the net new construction dollars do lag. Um, but certainly, any net new construction we get, we'd have to look at budget time on where to allocate those additional dollars. And and I, I think you're kind of hitting on it. Please fire EMS. Public Works is another big one. 
Um, at least in this area, we're already, you know, in the neighborhood and doing some work. So it probably doesn't add a whole lot of expense there, just a little bit more, you know, staff time while they're there. Uh, but certainly those are conversations that, you know, we will be having. Yeah, I mean, I'd certainly like to, to at least get um, both of the chief's opinion about adding 88 more units on there. I mean, if you, you know, think about the number of people that that could potentially have within that one building, um, just whether they feel that they're equipped for for that many units. I mean, I know we've got others similar uh, around the city, but um, if we start or if we keep adding more and more of those type of structures on, I want to make sure that they've got the safety in place in order to to be able to handle those if a problem arises. Sure, and I think, you know, we certainly would be able to, to look and see how many calls we're getting out at Nordic Ridge, for example. I think yep. this would be market rate similar to that. I forget how many total units are there, but it might be a little bit less if I remember right, but in the ballpark anyway. I think so, it's actually, actually more on the end of Hall Avenue. Is it? Yeah. The oh yeah, buildings. there's two buildings there, that's right. Um, so, but we can certainly have that conversation and, and bring that feedback, you know, to the council before this, when this gets there, if, if that's yeah. what you guys decide to do. Yeah, I mean, I'd certainly like to hear that before I can render a decision on this. All right, any thoughts about the exceptions from anyone? Uh, I'll start with Phil again. I think you're muted, Phil. You are correct, Rodney. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I no, I think as long as we address the parkland, that was really, you know, uh, adding this density. Uh, I, I think having a more park amenity would be very important. All right, and Alder Majewski, you have any thoughts about uh, the exceptions? Uh, not necessarily for this uh, development per se by itself, but in general, with the amount of density that we're going to have at one in the town, and how heavy do you want to go? So it's a question for the future that we need to actually address. Um, you know, you, you got this one, you're going to have uh, 51 West coming up with a few. We already have the one on uh, Jackson, the, the blue castle, whatever that, that is. Um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just worried about overall density and concentration sure. for the city in general. Sure. And, and Connor, what are you seeing in Dane County density-wise? Are you seeing any trends? I have one more thing to say. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, what I don't want to see is what's happening in Middleton. Have you been there lately? Yes, I've toured some of those. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you look at uh, uh, between Airport Road and um, University, the, the amount of the amount of high density development that's going on there. I don't want to see anything like that in this community. Not, not, not at those levels. Sure. And what are you seeing, Connor? You know, throughout Dane County, it's been probably multifamily has been one of the strongest asset classes now for the better half of the past three to four years, I would say. Um, and that's, that's no different than the trends that we're seeing in you know, municipalities surrounding and within Stoughton. Uh, in terms of the densities themselves, you know, we're, we're not looking at uh, an urban feel here. It's it's we we do feel it's appropriate in supporting some of the commercial uses adjacent to the site. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we we had I, I believe it was upwards of a hundred plus units originally planned within the second phase of Kettle Park West way back when. Which since we've all transitioned to you know the alley product or some of the traditional single family lots. Um, so as far as an immediate need for some density of this housing type within the Kettle Park West area. 
we feel very strongly about it. And we feel that, um, you know, market absorption in this type of product in this side of the city would be very well received. Um, so we do feel it's an appropriate um, overall density for, for Kettle Park West in particular. All right, thank you. And all the person Schumacher, you have any thoughts on any of this? A um, couple of them. Uh, I mean, I share a lot of the concerns that, that both Tom and, and Phil had brought up, um, particularly surrounding the density and, and what that would have an effect. I mean, I know we're making some street and road improvements and that in there, but um, what that sheer volume of traffic is, is going to add to it. I, I mean, I'm not saying that <laughs> this one building is going to throw everything over the limit, but if, if we keep adding adding buildings like this then uh you know because who's to say that something else doesn't change on on some of the other development phases also and we keep upping the density here so uh, i think we do need it's prudent to understand what that area can bear as far as the streets and such um uh, one other question i had was be, with this uh with this zoning classification that MR24, is there a different classification that could be used that wouldn't have so many exceptions to it? I mean, uh, like the 12 unit, uh, 88 unit per building seems sort of like an extreme, um, extreme exception. Yeah, so this is, MR24 is our highest density zoning that we use as a comparable. It, admittedly, an MR24 zoning with a maximum unit count of 12 units per building, it, it, it's almost fairly difficult to get to 24 units per acre when you have buildings with only 12 units in each one. So um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it, that almost might not work out very well math-wise. So that might be something we need to look at future for the MR24 if we desire to. Uh, right now, the GDP process that we're utilizing here is really the, the avenue that's available to consider higher density and, and um, more compact development such as this. Okay. I mean, I think that could uh, kind of shoehorn into what uh, what Tom was talking about with how much density do we, do we want to bear. So do, if we want to add uh, different different classifications into the uh, different zoning classifications as far as density goes. I mean, I think that'd be a good conversation to have at some point. Excellent. Uh, Commissioner Robinson, we're, we're discussing uh, th these uh, multi-unit out at Kettle Park West. Did you have any thoughts about that? Okay, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm i gathering that. I, I wanted to say some. I haven't received an invite the last two meetings. And my wife just mentioned to me, this is the second Monday. Uh, and I thought, oh, good grief. So that's why I'm on so late. Um, but I have not received the email. So I don't know what's going on. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. We'll, we'll follow up on that. I'm yeah, I've, re here. I've received everyone up till last meeting than this meeting so i, I apologize know. we'll we'll look into it okay did you have any questions or thoughts about um this proposal here okay Guess not. Um, so th this is the, the proposed plan here is the multi-units here. And we were just kind of finishing up the conversation. Um, you know, it sounds like we're gonna have some follow-up conversation about um, future densities. And then, uh, you know, if this gets to council, then we're gonna have conversations with police, fire and EMS about providing services out here. So that's kind of the summary of what we've talked about before you had logged in, Tom. Okay. And I don't know if you have any questions or thoughts about any of that. If you do, I, feel free. I, I don't know. Okay. 
All right, since it's a small group tonight, we're just kind of going round table. It seems more efficient that way. Um, anybody else have any other thoughts or ideas here? All right, here none. Um, and the other thing, Tom, is, is that Rodney had some language proposed to include the uh, future parkland dedication as far as is part of this proposal. I, I can just recap quickly. Um, the bullet on the bottom of the proposed ordinance is being suggested to be replaced. So the third bullet point of item six, staff is recommending a, a change of language to talk about us um, entering into an agreement with this city and the developer related to dedication of land. Otherwise, we'd just be receiving a fee in lieu of land dedication. Uh, but after discussions with the recreation director and the mayor and others, we feel it's appropriate to try to preserve parkland dedication to manage this uh, size multifamily du or multifamily development in, a, in an area of Kettle Park West, you know, farther to the west, adding on to the existing parkland out there to accommodate the 88 units that would be part of this proposal. All right, so at this point, is anyone uh, feel comfortable to make a recommendation to the council? I don't believe so. Uh, from what uh, Alder Schumacher was saying that he would like to see more, uh, hear, hear from fire and safety and uh, have a better look at the traffic patterns. So you want to have that conversation here and um, before it goes to council. I definitely I would, would, would like to hear that. I would think so. Okay. Um, anybody else think any differently? Hearing none, I guess that's what we'll do. Thank Are you, you going to make a motion to table with certain pieces of information that were referenced, or, or do you just want to have it understood that way, Mayor? How, how would you want to proceed? Uh, whatever the commissioners would prefer. Okay. Do you guys right. want to give us direction, or do you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to table this until we can get feedback uh, regarding uh, public safety around the, the additional development, or not additional, but the uh, change in development. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, and on, uh, on the table, there's, well, it's no discussion unless we call it something other than table, but I think we already know the issues. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. So Connor, we'll get to work on that, and we'll we'll let you know when we're ready to bring it back. Should be by the next meeting. Um, hopefully, it doesn't mess up your timetable too much. Well, that, it's perfectly understandable. Thank you, Mayor Swadley, uh, staff, all the persons, and uh, commissioners. We'll be in touch. All right. Thank you for being here. Um, the next item is coming from Forward Development Group for a specific implementation plan amendment for 2501 Jackson Street, uh, Director Shield. Yeah, this one's really related to a, um, a, a need to change a window location. It might saw, sound kind of um, small, uh, but there is, you'll recall the commercial building that we just talked about on the east, um, east side of the project we just spoke of at the corner of Kell Park Way and Jackson Street. Recently it was before the commissioners related to um, the, the facade and the, the, and the site plan. And they were going through their process and found a conflict with where they needed to site their electrical panel and, and metering system. And therefore, on the screen, you'll see two clouded locations. Um, the one um, that I'm trying to highlight here in the, the middle third, if you will, uh, was where a window was previously planned. Uh, they're proposing to re, re locate that window to a point farther to the east. So on the very northeast corner of Emilio's uh, building, uh, they're proposing to relocate that. Uh, the area that um, would remain, it'd be the area where they'd have their, their metering point for the building. 
um, and, and the applicants can speak to that. At the same time, they came across a, a different lighting system or light poles and exterior lighting that they wanted to have us contemplate. Uh, that's certainly compliant with the code. Uh, but we thought since we were bringing it back to discuss the elevation changes on this particular building, uh, it was worthy of having the lighting pole uh, discussion at the same time. So that's what's before you tonight, really the, the change to their, their, their site plan or their building plans related to the relocation of the window and the, the different lighting equipment being used on their site. All right, and Susan, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think uh, you guys covered what we're looking for. All right. Any thoughts or comments from commissioners? But could, could you explain the, it, it, am I understanding the lighting as being now on the building itself instead of on a pole? Is that what you're saying? No, we're looking to just change the um, fixture from like one brand to another. Oh, okay. Um, so we've just submitted a revised photometric for that. All right. I had one question about your window relocation. The um, the tenant B was that one. Um, if you refresh my memory, is that like a an office space use? Is that one what that one was destined for? You're talking the one in the middle there center yep yeah that space has not been leased yet so it hasn't really been identified what the use will be okay do you feel that by by changing the the natural lighting in that space that that will make it more or less difficult to to lease that space out or uh potentially limit its uses i don't think it will because it allows for a good area to put the bathrooms within the building um or within that space for them so I don't think it'll affect being able to lease it. Okay, thank you. Susan, I know that we didn't speak to this directly, but um, the landscaping plan and the, and the screening that will be associated with the, the metering system and the equipment along the building will have to be modified slightly uh, because it, you had foundational plantings right up, uh, right up to that area. I assume that'll, that'll be bumped out but will, will there be any additional landscaping treatment, maybe taller and such to help screen that since it is on a very visible north side of the building? Yeah, we can definitely look at what we can do. I know our only limitation is just, we have to stay like three feet away from all the equipment. And we also have the transformer that'll be nearby that area as well. All right. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Okay. So here in non, uh, looks like we do have a resolution in the packet. I would entertain a motion for that resolution. Make a motion for that resolution for the amendment. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any questions or comments? So, Susan, it looks like they're doing a lot of work out there. Do they have an anticipated uh, completion date? Right now, we're targeting like the end of June for it to be completed for the with the tenants starting to open. June, okay. And I don't know if we've met. What's your position? I'm the construction manager with Ford Development. Oh, okay. It's nice to meet you. Um, anybody else have anything? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed, that motion carries. Thank you for being here. Great, thank you very much. Okay, next item is number eight, a uh, request from Purvish Patel for a pro Approval of an accessory structure at the Quality Inn at 660 Nygaard Street. This one I know I talked to uh, to Michael a little bit about. Who wants to cover this? I can just give you a quick overview. Um, we, we found that this shed had been installed, if you will, in the street side of the, the building. 
Um, may have been there one prior, but currently this one would not have been placed under a permit. So uh, we're actually going through the process to have it considered. Um, in doing so, uh, we think that there might be a more suitable location to help um, help locate it on their site. And I'm just trying to quickly locate that on the screen here. Um, so on the screen, you'll see there's the, the area where the X is actually the three parcels. Right now, the shed is placed along the, the Nygaard Street frontage. Um, it seems like there's a site, if you will, in the north, southwest corner of the parcel, uh, just off the parking lot, that will uh, potentially have a, a less conspicuous location for it. And that's where it's being proposed to be positioned as part of this application. Um, this, this illustration, uh, while it's in a red, it's labeled down here in red, it's difficult to see, but it's in the very south west corner, if you will, of lot 21, as opposed to being right along the right of way of Nygaard Street. All right, any questions or comments? So when I look at the resolution, Rodney, um, are, is there something in there about the location? Um, it would it would be the result. It would be the location that's shown in their application, which is what was identified in this plan sheet. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Anybody have anything? By moving it, that's not going to require that any trees be removed. Is that true? No. No, we don't believe that it will. But we actually are uh, trying to work with the owner of the property to revegetate the area to screen the the dumpster enclosure that is along Nygaard Street. Uh, they had some overgrown um, plantings that had been there from the original installation that they've scaled back. Um, we're encouraging them to replant screening vegetation along the Nygaard area to screen the dumpster enclosure better. That would be good. Um, uh, and uh, I know the restaurant that's kind of set at an angle there. Um, I don't recall offhand. I, I think it's the back of the building that would be facing that. I don't think there are any um, dining room windows that would face looking at the shed. Is that am I right with that? I'm I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly. I think you're correct, and I also think that there's a vegetative um, shrubbery line, if you will, between the two properties that helps kind of also visually separate the two the two businesses. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, so I guess I would entertain a motion for approval of the resolution. Motion, motion. motion by Majewski. Was there a second? Second. Second by Robinson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? That motion carries. Item number nine, a request by Ray and Lisa Zovar for the approval of a facade improvement at 143 East Main Street. Uh, Director Shield. Yeah, you'll recall we, we actually kind of referenced it earlier in the downtown design overlay district where uh, there's a process in which um, exterior modifications and painting uh, come before the commission. Um, th these people recently took took over uh, the building to uh, move into it for their operation. Uh, they proceeded with painting and redoing some some exterior items, and really are here trying to uh, seek approval following that already having been completed. Um, as on the screen right now is is the current. Um, exterior painting that's there. I'll, I'll get to another screen that shows it a little better. This is a this is a little better close up. Um, then I'll also get to the point where you can compare that to what was there in the past. The glass that is there that on the top there that was that was underneath what was previously there. Yeah. So here's here's. Uh, 
Here's what was there before. <clears throat> And then this is the current. Okay. We also have a, an interest in removing the awnings that are shown on the top or that currently exist along the top three windows here. Um, removal seems very consistent with adjacent buildings that don't utilize awnings. Uh, and awnings weren't as prevalent probably on the on the south side buildings in in original construction um, because the daylight didn't generally shine in as much on south face or you know north facing buildings such as this. All right. Any questions or comments from commissioners? I do like the, the new that uh, terracotta color that they've done on uh, the apartment door as well as on the base of the of the front facade in there. I think that is a close match with the brickwork that's that's up above it. Um, however, the, the the door color and and that I think is it's it is just it just doesn't fit. Um, it's it's going to make it too dark in that entryway, I think. Um, I, I do have to say uh, the, the other color scheme that was in there with the white door uh, with the red panels seemed to be at least a little bit brighter. I mean, I understand what they're going for with, with um, it being a, a fine art place and we want it to be um, of interest, um, but I'm not sure that that's what we would want to have in, in the historic areas. I mean, not as a business, I mean, just as a, as a odd color that's in there. Anybody else have any thoughts? All right, and is that color, does that fit into the ordinance? I think the ordinance really um, has the plan commission review of those. I, I don't know bold colors like this. I, I can't recall the specific language about the painting colors, but um, certainly compatible with the districts comes to mind, but I don't know if that's the, the exact wording of the, of the ordinance. Michael, can you? <laughs> Can you help with any of that language or the, the color discussion? It, there should be something outlined in this in the staff review. I just want um, to I'll pull it up about colors. I hope. Well, I agree with Brad. It just seems out of place. So I'll blow this up, but it's on the bottom of this page. Exterior colors. Here we go. Yeah, I have a difficult time with this kind of stuff because they're the artist and I'm not, but it, it did kind of stick out and I don't know if that was the intent or if that's a thing. Well, it, it's obvious in the letter they, they were unaware of the standard and the issues at hand and the need to go through this process. So they didn't have the guidance of even the exterior color language of our ordinance to refer to. Uh, in their selection. So I, I don't know what went into the selection of their colors. So I guess the question is, it would be appropriate for us to ask them to, to repaint the door. I, I think that's what I'm hearing. I certainly think the ordinance allows you to do so. Is that is that what you'd like to do, uh, Alder Schumacher? 
Um, I, I just think that they'll they would find that using those really dark set colors like that are going and with that uh, deeply recessed doorway like that is is really going to darken that um, entryway in there. And, and that's the only the only issue you see is that entryway. Yep, that's that's it. Uh, otherwise, the the other color they have on the base. And the apartment door, I think, is is actually fits better than what was on there prior. Um, and as I'm just kind of doing like a, a Google Street tour up and down Main Street, I just don't see any other door colored similarly. I mean, which I know may be to their advantage as a business of having the only door colored that, but um, then we would be setting precedent for oddly colored doors. I'm not sure who CS is, but I don't think the applicants on online with us. <clears throat> uh, however, if they are, I, I'd like to hear from them. No, they said they were going to be gone. OK, thank you. So what would an appropriate color or options <laughs> may be? I, well, I think, I think one possible option would be to uh, table action on it and request the applicant to present a proposal uh, recognizing the concern about the bold nature of the color used for the door uh, in relationship to the ordinance that that they now have available to them to understand what what goals are trying to be obtained in the downtown district that sound acceptable to the commission i'm satisfied with that it does all right yep. So do you want a motion to that effect? I think I think it would be helpful. All right, um, I will uh, make a motion to table the discussion until we can have a different proposal from the owners on a door or, or a vestibule cover color choice. All right, is there a second? A second. All right. No discussion on a table. All in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. Uh, future agenda items. Um, anything from commissioners? Discussion regarding densities. Okay. All right. Uh, maybe, yep. maybe a discussion regarding. Um, uh, color selections. I mean, because it's a pretty ambiguous. You know, what we just what we just voted on is pretty ambiguous, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I, I was toying with voting no for that. Uh, I didn't because I think it gives the applicant an opportunity to defend what they what they have and also suggest an alternative. Uh, I don't necessarily think that the colors are bad. I just don't think the combination is great. That's but that's my own personal taste. Um, and I think we're in kind of muddy waters with that. Okay. I agree with, uh, with Alder Majewski on that one. It is squishy language when, when we're talking about that and it, it is subjective. Yeah. And I think that'd be a good conversation, uh, when commissioner Barber is available because he did a lot of work on that ordinance with us and he certainly has some expertise as well as preference. So I think that's fine. Um, you know, I'm trying to understand exactly what we would want going forward from police, fire, and EMS um, as we consider, you know, future proposals, especially on the multi-unit. And I, we don't have to answer that tonight, but that might be something we might want to talk about as a future agenda item to try to at least establish some some criteria or standard questions that you would want us to ask emergency management ahead of time. I think that'd be wise. Uh, uh, you know, I know we've had a few discussions, especially about like turn radiuses and, and backup areas and, and that in a few of the last developments that we've discussed here. So I think maybe it would be good to get a, a checklist of sorts um, when we're thinking about any future developments so that we don't have to have the same discussions. 
All right. Anything else from commissioners? Anything from uh, Rodney or Michael that you'd want for a future agenda item? Well, certainly we're going to have the two tabled items or we would expect those to come back with more information at the next meeting. Um, but at this point, there isn't anything explicitly identified for next meeting. All right. Thank you very much. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And a second. I think I heard Majewski and Robinson maybe. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Thanks for being here tonight. Have a good rest of your evening. You also. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Good night, all. Good night.